All right, Doc, next question. Uh, first off, thank you both for making this show. I love it, and I've seen almost every episode. We're supposed to watch all of them. <laughs> My question is, um, what is Dr. Rand's opinion on the best way to control estrogen and DHT while on TRT and finasteride? About me, I'm 28 years old. I was previously on TRT for increased uh, well-being and athletic performance. I was on 250 uh, milligrams of testosterone and intake per week for 21 weeks. Unfortunately, during week uh, 17 to 21, I lost a tremendous, tremendous amount of hair and I stopped treatment. Two months after stopping treatment, I started taking finasteride and I have had significant hair regrowth using finasteride. Within a few weeks of taking finasteride, I started to experience sexual side effect, a loss of libido, weaker re reactions, and orgasm, some, tes uh, some testicles. I then added 25 uh, milligram of uh, Clomid daily and the sexual side effect mostly went away. Aside from losing hair, I felt much better on TRT and would prefer to go back on that, but I'm worried about controlling estrogen and DHT. I've read a study, copy below, which we're not going to read <laughs> on camera, uh, where they administered finasteride and Arimidex to K9. When both drugs were administered, it showed that there was significant significant increase in testosterone, DHT, and, prost and prostate volume. What is the doc's opinion on this? Would would you suggest controlling estrogen with a sperm with a serm? Was it serm or sarm? I don't know. S E R M. He wrote. Uh, uh, for estrogen, it's a serm. Okay, serm yeah. instead of an AI or using a different type of AI like exime exim stain. Exim stain. Aromacin, yeah. Okay. Uh, thanks in advance. Once again, I love the show. Um, he's sending us some pictures of his hair and all that stuff. Blah blah. blah. So, what do you think, doc? I have some, I'm going back and in, in, uh, in reading, yeah, it doesn't make a lot of sense. He said something about uh, DHT going up while taking finasteride. That doesn't make a lot of sense because that's what 5-alpha reductase inhibition does. It, it lowers your DHT. So effective dual inhibition of 5-alpha reductase and aromatase on spontaneous, it said it raised the DHT. That makes no sense. And I'm reading the results. I said I wouldn't read this on camera. You said we won't. No, it says it lowers. Yeah, it's going to lower your DHT. Uh, however, significant reserve with it. Okay, first of all, yeah, I'm sorry. The, 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 first of all, this is on canines. And yeah, this study, I see where he says. Uh, they found some cases where the DHT levels increased significantly. That makes no sense. So dogs might have a different uh, mechanism, mechanism of action for producing uh, dihydrotestosterone other than through conversion using 5-alpha reductase from testosterone to DHT. So yeah, we kind of got to throw the study out. That, that doesn't make any sense against dogs. And again. <laughs> I mean, no, I look, look, you know, you get on the internet, you're looking for whatever answers you can. Let's get back to the, 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 the basis of all this. At age 28, what I found in practice is that if you have male pattern baldness, and he says hair loss, but he doesn't say where, but male pattern baldness is when you lose it from back here. That typically starts to occur in your late 20s, early 30s. If it's going to occur, that's when you're going to notice it. If it's going to occur in a big way, certainly. Uh, so by age 30, you're going to know, hey, I got male pattern baldness or not. This could be just correlative. It's, hey, at 28, things are setting in, and you ex accelerated it by getting on exogenous testosterone, which converts, obviously, more readily when you have extra to dihydrotestosterone. Dihydrotestosterone is really what's accelerating it, not testosterone. That's what we understand so far about the way things work. So you get on finasteride and you get regrowth, yes because that will occur within six months, as I've seen in practice for the most part, you can reverse things. Like with women, deepening of the voice, hair in the wrong places, even clitoral enlargement when they're using excessive dosages, you can get some or all reversal of those side effects if you if you notice them and stop within six months of noticing them, mm. or of when they actually occurred, whether you notice them or not. So. Hopefully you notice them right away, and if you stop within six months, most or all of it will reverse. Oh, wow. So this totally makes sense so far. Now, what also makes sense is you stymie the DHT production, and people forget it's 
think depending upon the receptor, two to five times more potent than testosterone. So, uh, in other words, where it's you know where it's having its effect, where it's 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 binding to the receptor. So you know you got low T because you've gone off, right? And now uh, you're killing the one thing that was giving you uh, putting some lead in your pencil, giving you something in effect. Has the side effects too, but it's very potent. So you bury your DHT, and all of a sudden you start having problems related to low testosterone overall. Makes sense. Uh, so okay, bailed on the finasteride. Um, went on clomiphene. Okay, so now you are building your endogenous production back up again, and the side effects, sexual side effects, went away. Well, you got your high T to make up for it, and that's why when you start on replacement therapy, at least in my practice. If someone has an issue with hair or uh, acne, both of which are driven, ex exacerbated, if it's in your genes, by dihydrotestosterone, I say, hey, wait, give me at least six weeks of replacement therapy so we get your T levels back up and you feel good so that we don't yank the rug out from underneath you. The only thing you're clinging to is that you know more powerful DHT. Mm -hmm. Wait till we get enough T, compensatory T in there so when we obliterate your DHT, if that's what you wanna do, you won't feel it. So this all makes sense, right? Am I making yeah. that? Uh, clear so uh, okay yeah I felt better on TRT well you were probably at super super physiologic dose uh, more than likely with 250 megs of testosterone and anthate per week um, to control estrogen if you're worried about that you use uh, again my favorite I've always said is uh, natrozol and AI and DHT you're left with uh, finasteride <coughs> or dutasteride Salpamento works very weakly, uh, but <clears throat> here's an option. Instead of taking it internally, you can use ketoconazole, which is, acts as a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor. Um, it's, it's for fungal infections, but you can use that topically, along with finasteride topically. I haven't seen a, a compounder that will put dutasteride, because it comes in an oil base, typically, in a, in a hair product, but those two work really well. You know what else works well with those? Okay, and again, why we why am I saying this? Because topically, you get it right at the hair follicle where you want it, mm -hmm. but you're not going to absorb much systemically, so you can avoid the sexual side effects or any mm -hmm. other side effects that he was complaining about, like, uh, uh, well, the mainly sexual and sore testicles, he said, uh, which probably had nothing to do with that, except, uh, you know, I find that sore testicles, as he's describing it, um, you get pain in the testicles if you're either starting to lose some of your production or regain some of your production from the lytic cells. That's mm. just what I've seen. Mm. Um, but uh, latanoprost, what Latisse was probably going to be originally, but for some business mm. goings on, uh, they put something else in there, another prostaglandin. So um, uh, latanoprost with a 5 alpha reductase inhibitor like finasteride and or ketoconazole and you can fight your genetics for much longer than without. So he's, I think he's asking for solutions. That's one of them, or a couple of them. The Tanaprost will help the hair grow, and of course the 5-alpha the, uh, reductase inhibition topically will help prevent the, the, uh, the destruction of the, the hair follicle. Um, eczema stain or aromacin versus Arimidex, there's really not much difference, uh, arguably. They do work a little bit differently, obviously, but in effect, there's not much difference. Uh, I think we covered that one. Good. Right, did I miss anything? Nope. Nope. Thanks, Doc.